Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Williams Warm-Up. We're back in Austin and there's plenty going on, including our latest pop-up shop, an all-star party and of course, Logan's FP1 appearance on Friday. Let's take you behind the scenes. We start in Suzuka where we caught up with Williams Racing brand ambassador Jensen Button to get his thoughts on the season so far as well as this week in Austin. Here's what he had to say. Well, Jensen, thank you so much for joining us. I guess, first of all, how are you doing? What have you been up to? I'm really good, thank you. Um, I've been busier than ever. You know, I always used to think when I was in F1, it's such a busy schedule, but when you step away, you always seem to get busier. But um, no, it's really, really nice to be here in, in Suzuka. Such a special track for me. I've raced here since 95. I raced here in go-karts. Uh, and I got the Ayrton Senna Memorial Trophy. Um, which was pretty special. Uh, and then I started racing here in 2000 uh, and raced here in Formula One, won here in 2011. And I also raced here in Super GT a couple of times. Big lover of Suzuka, such a fast flowing track. Uh, I think all the drivers love it. You know, they, when they're asked about their favorites between this and Spa, and I think most people now are saying here, narrow, twisty, fast, very rewarding if you get a lap together. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great circuit to come to. Let's talk about Williams and, and the season we've had so far. What's, what's your assessment on that and how do you feel we've been doing? With the new regulations, um, you always hope for a lot. You think, ah, oh, a new season, new, new regulations. You know, it'd be nice to see the, the team make a massive jump from 2021. But it doesn't happen like that. There's been a lot of change within the team. And I think there's a real understanding of what needs to be done. It just takes time. It doesn't change overnight. Um, we're also racing in Formula One. It's the most competitive sport in the world in terms of technology. You know, Williams is in 1% of the quickest car out there. It's not easy, but I think you know it's great to see some, some good results. And a lot of them down to the team working together as one with the strategy. There's also been some really good races that Williams hasn't quite scored points, but you look at it and go, actually, that was actually the best race of the season. So there's really good progress and I think the progress comes from more the team dynamic and the team atmosphere. Alex's involvement with the team, Alex Albon, how he's come in, really been a team player, uh, and the team have really got behind him and very supportive of him. You can really see his, his skill in terms of speed, but also the way that he works for the team and builds a team around him. Yeah, speaking about Alex, obviously he's come back into the sport after a year out. What's your assessment on his return and you know how he's performed with Williams this year? Obviously, scoring points on a couple of occasions as well. Like, what, how do you think he's he's done in his return? Well, Formula One is it's obviously about outright speed, but it's also the mental approach as well. As a driver, when you've had a season in Formula One with a top team and then you're like pushed to the side because they weren't quite happy with your performances, it's really difficult to come back from that. For him to come back after a year out jump in the car and be competitive from the word go. I think it really shows his belief in himself, but also the people that he has around him and the, the team atmosphere that we have here at Williams that really welcomed him in and didn't put pressure on his shoulders to succeed immediately. But because of that, he did succeed immediately. So I think he's in a great place. You know, he has confidence in himself, confidence in the team. You can just see that he wants to develop as a driver. Alex wants to be fighting at the front. Every driver wants to be, but he's not going to get there unless he works hard. And he has done that, which has been uh, really, really good to see. Yeah, there's plenty happening on track, but also off track at Williams. There's you know, plenty of events going on. You were at the two in Miami and at Canada at the Maxim event. How did you find those? Were they, were they good fun? Yeah, really good. I mean, you know, as, a, as a, an old racing driver now, I still am racing actually, I'm not retired. Uh, but retired from F1. It's nice to go and see the other side of it because as a driver, you don't really spend much time at events in the evening. You might pop in and do your little wave and then you leave again. So you've got to get to bed early, you get your bottle just before bed and you're, uh, you're in bed early. So Williams has really brought the fun back into the sport. I think there's a couple of teams in the sport that have always been good at off-track stuff. And Williams is definitely one of those teams now um, that has a good understanding of this is sport. We need to make sure that it's it's serious on track, but it's also fun off track. Yeah, and speaking of that, Austin up next. We'll have uh, Robin Thicke and Shaggy down at our ACL event on the Friday. You'll be there as well. Looking forward to that one? Yeah, I am. I mean, um, I love a big event party, but especially uh, Robin Thicke's great. But for me, it's Shaggy. I grew up with Shaggy, so it's like, it's the coolest thing. But I'm going to go and see Shaggy perform. Maybe I'll get to meet him if I'm lucky. Austin's a great city. The race in Austin is always spectacular. Um, so it's nice to, to have that action off track as well, downtown in Austin. Focusing back on track now, Austin is the next one, Austin Grand Prix. What are you expecting from that race? Obviously you've driven that circuit, how do you find it? 
Austin is a very challenging track and it's, it's one of the new tracks out there, but probably the most challenging of them all. Very fast, flowing, change of direction. The first sector after turn one is very similar to Suzuka. Um, so from turn two down to turn eight, fast, flowing, change of direction. One little mistake um, or running wide in one section cost you a lot of time, five corners down the road. So I really like that about Austin. You also have the big straights, so you can race, you can overtake. Um, and then you have some other fast flowing corners and some slow zones. So it works very well as a racetrack for qualifying and also as a, as a racetrack for the race where you can really fight for, for position. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking more specifically about it, Logan Sargent will be jumping in the car for FP1. What do you think he'll be looking to get from that session? Obviously, it'll be his second time in an F1 car. What, what do you think he'll be looking to gain? I mean, he's going to have a lot of pressure on his shoulders. He's driving an F1 car in the US as an American. So um, he's got to try and stay relaxed and realize it is a test day. It's not about trying to set the quickest time. He needs to just enjoy it, enjoy the moment, give as good a feedback as possible for the team because obviously it's experience for him, but it's also experience for the team for that race weekend to have both drivers input. I don't think he's done a lot of driving around that circuit either, Austin, and it's not an easy one to learn. He's been in the simulator a lot and will be in it a lot more for, for, for the session, but for him it's to relax. Do his thing, he knows how to drive a racing car. Listen to what the engineers are saying, listen to what your teammates doing, um, and uh, make sure you're prepared when you get in the car. Yeah, speaking more specifically about the academy as well, obviously Logan Sargent doing really well in F2. Jamie Chadwick, W Series, obviously really successful. You've also got Ollie and Zach O'Sullivan who are in an F3 and F4. How good is it to see that pathway being put in place for the drivers and that, you know, you can see there's a clear direction and pathway being put in place? Yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot, of, a lot of talent there um, on the Williams books, which is great to see. Uh, it's also great for the drivers. It gives them a real opportunity. I'm really happy that Williams has stepped up and we have uh, the Young Driver program now. When I, when I started in Formula 1, there was nothing like that. When I was 20, I was lucky enough that uh, I had the opportunity to race at Williams. Um, obviously a team that I loved and I watched the greats race at Williams, so it was such an opportunity for me. But I, I basically got lucky that I had the opportunity really to drive. The Young Driver program, it prepares the driver for Formula One. I was not prepared at all. You know, I, I've said many times before, I was actually in a pub having a pint when um, Sir Frank called and uh, I didn't believe it was Frank Williams. So I was, like, I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And I was looking around for my mates, seeing if they were on the phone. And so I was like, oh no, it is Frank Williams. And, uh, and he said, are you ready for Formula One? And I was driving in Formula Three at the time, which is a lot slower than the Formula Three cars now. And I said, no, Frank, I'm, I'm not ready for Formula One. And I put the phone down, spoke to my dad. And he's like, you said what to Frank Williams? I said, well, I'm not ready, am I? He said, doesn't matter, you don't say that. He said, you will learn. I'm like, okay, I called Frank back. He said, Frank, I'm ready now. Um, and he's like, okay, we'll come in and we'll, we'll talk about how this could move forward. Whereas, you know, all the youngsters that are on the Young Driver program, they have all that experience. They're getting to drive in series that are very competitive, but they also spend, get time to spend with the, the, the F1 team. They get time in the simulator, they get time with the, the drivers, the engineers. I mean, they are so prepared and ready when they jump in an F1 car, because you have to be. 2023, just around the corner. What do you think the aims will be for Williams as a whole, moving into 2023 and beyond? For, for Nicky Latifi, he's, uh, he's stepping aside in, in 2023. Um, it's been lovely sort of spending a bit of time with, with Nicky. Obviously, it hasn't worked out for 2023 for him, but uh, I think he's enjoyed the last three years of, of working with Williams. But uh, it, it leaves an opening for, for a seat alongside Alex Albon. So there's uh, obviously a lot of talk of who that's going to be for 2023, which is, which is quite exciting. So it's, it's definitely preparing that driver and making sure he's ready to go up alongside Alex because they're teammates. But you know, when you have such a competitive teammate, mentally that can be really tough for a driver. So they need to be in the right mind space in terms of team, in terms of team performance. It's just developing on what the team has right now. And the most important thing is that they understand how to do it. The, the mental attitude of the team and, and how they've been able to pull together in difficult times and still be positive is fantastic. And you don't see that in many teams when times are tough. So it's, it's lovely to see. It means the management's working well and management, all the different departments is working well. It's nice to see the progress and the excitement for the future for this team. Well, Jensen, thanks so much for joining us. It's great to see you and uh, we'll see you in Austin. Cheers, man. Thank you. A new pair of hands will experience the FW44 in Austin this weekend when Logan Sargent takes the reins of Nicky's point-scoring car for FP1. 
If you're wondering who Logan is, apart from being the owner of one of the coolest names in motorsport, he is a member of the Williams Racing Driver Academy and the lead rookie in Formula 2. Many consider the 21-year-old America's best hope for an F1 driver. So, where better for Logan to make his Grand Prix weekend debut than at Austin's Circuit of the Americas? Logan's racing record should tell you everything you need to know about why he's earned his FP1 appearance this week. In 2015, he joined prestigious company alongside names such as Charles Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, and a certain Alex Albon when he won the Karting World Championship, becoming the first American to do so since the 70s. He and Oscar Piastri, McLaren's new driver for 2023, shared an F3 championship fight for the ages in 2020. The two fought until the very end, but a lap one collision in the finale had Logan narrowly miss out on the title. One year after that, another impressive F3 season in 2021 led us to recruit Logan to the Williams Academy, funnily enough, at the United States Grand Prix. And now, just one year later, after two wins, two pole positions, and sitting P3 in the F2 standings, Logan is about to take on Formula One in his home country. So, while you won't hear the Star Spangled Banner on the podium this year, be on the lookout for the stars and stripes of Logan's All-American helmet in the FW44 on Friday. But don't let me set the scene alone. Here's how the man himself is feeling ahead of driving in front of his home crowd. OK, Logan, firstly, thank you for joining us. I guess the best place to start is your F2 season so far. Just take us through how, how that's been. Uh, I'd say in general it's been a pretty good year. We've had our ups and downs. Made some mistakes, but I feel like I've, I've learned from most of them. Uh, but most importantly, I feel like we've been extremely quick all year. You know, we put together some really good rounds and we need to try and do that at the last one. Yeah, you mentioned that Abu Dhabi, the last one. What's the aim from that, just to get as many points as possible? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at this point, it's, a, it's pretty much a one race shootout in the championship. Um, full attack, have a good qualifying and go from there. Obviously, turning attention to your home Grand Prix, it'll be on home soil for you. And you know, that was the place last year where we announced you'd be joining the team. What are your memories of that, of that day? Yeah, obviously it's pretty much like a one-year anniversary for me with the team. It was a special day for me, obviously getting a chance to be moving into F2 and also be joining a Formula One Academy. It's obviously a special moment. It's going to be special in front of the American fans and uh, I'm just going to try to enjoy it. Yeah, you mentioned it there I think a little bit, but you know, heading into that FP1 session that you're going to be driving the FW44, how are your emotions at the minute You know, ahead of that? Yeah, obviously you're always slightly nervy getting into something that you're not completely comfortable with, but um, as I said, the plan is just to enjoy it, learn as much as I can, and you know, enjoy my first official outing in a Formula One club. You sort of mentioned it a little bit there, you know, you did get to drive the FW43 being the post-season test in Abu Dhabi, but this will be the first taste in the FW44. Is it just a case of learning as much as physically possible in that time? Yeah, pretty much. I think the sim's already, you know, really good prep for me, uh, going through all the procedures, learning the track best I can and the way the car needs to be driven. Uh, but you never really know until you actually get out there. Yeah, just take it step by step, lap by lap, and uh, make the most of it. Have you driven Coast before? Have you been around it at all? I've been there once around four years ago in Indy Lights car. So it's been a while. I know my way around, and uh, I'm sure it'll come back to me pretty quick. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, Austin's a place super cool. Just take us through what your favorite parts of it are. Like, what do you enjoy about being there? Yeah, Austin's definitely probably one of my most favorite places in America. I absolutely love the city as a whole. Uh, the food's amazing. Get myself some good barbecue. And, um, you know, the track's awesome as well, so I'm just looking forward to the whole weekend. Obviously, plenty to experience on track, but there'll be a lot happening with Williams off track as well with our you know, fan activations, as you've been to already. Uh, we'll have DJ Cassidy at our ACL event, as well as Chaggy and many other sort of guests we've got coming up. So, you know, you're looking forward to that part of it as well? Yeah, for sure. Obviously, from this far out, I'm mainly just worried about uh, doing my job in FP1, and then uh, I'll enjoy the rest after. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you might have seen a little bit of the Williams merch so far for Austin. What do you think of it? Any good? I personally think it looks really good and uh, you should buy it. Shameless plug there. Well, Logan, best of luck in FB1 and we'll be, uh, we'll be following you all the way. Cool. Thank you. And that is it for this week's episode of the Williams Warm-Up. We'll be back next week when we head to Mexico. But in the interim, be sure to download our app, check out our brand new Austin merch, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>